Good evening. This is Akashwani. I am Valsa Williams with the news at 9. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to leave on a 5-day state visit to the United States and Egypt tomorrow to lead Yoga Day celebrations at United Nations headquarters on Wednesday. India to gift indigenously built in-service missile corvette INS Kirpan to Vietnam. Khadi Village Industries Commission turnover increases by 332% in the last 9 years. Hindustani Awam Morcha Secular withdraws support from Grand Alliance led by Chief Minister Nitish Kumar. G20 Sustainable Finance Working Group takes deeper view on carbon reduction and heat wave conditions likely to abate from tomorrow over East India and adjoining areas Rajasthan and Assam facing floods. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will embark on a 5-day visit to the United States and Egypt tomorrow. Briefing media in New Delhi, Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra said Mr Modi will pay an official state visit to the US on the 21st to the 23rd of this month at the invitation of US President Joseph Biden and First Lady Dr Jill Biden. He said the visit will commence in New York where the Prime Minister will lead the celebrations of the International Day of Yoga at the United Nations headquarters this Wednesday. Mr Modi will receive a ceremonial welcome at the White House in Washington on Thursday and hold talks with President Biden to continue their high-level dialogue. The US President and First Lady will host a state dinner in honor of the Prime Minister in the evening. Prime Minister Modi will also address a joint sitting of the US Congress on the 22nd of June. The next day the Prime Minister will be jointly hosted at a luncheon by US Vice President Kamala Harris and Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Mr Modi is scheduled to have several curated interactions with leading CEOs, professionals and other stakeholders. He will also meet members of the Indian diaspora. Our correspondent has filed this report. United States will roll out the red carpet this week for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This will be the first state visit of Prime Minister Modi to the US. It is an honor reserved for the US's closest allies and friends. The visit is a milestone in India-US cooperation and it is a visit on which there is a genuine and widespread deep interest in the United States. One of the key components which will be prominently showcased will be bilateral defense cooperation. Defense industrial cooperation roadmap will be a key outcome of Mr Modi's US visit. Suparna Saikya, Akashwani News, Delhi. The Prime Minister will reach Cairo on the 24th at the invitation of President of Egypt Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to pay a state visit to Egypt. This will be the Prime Minister's first visit to the North African country. Apart from President Sisi, Mr Modi will interact with senior dignitaries from the Egyptian government, some prominent Egyptian personalities as well as the Indian community there. Mr Modi will visit 11th century Al-Hakim Mosque renovated by the Bohra community. The Prime Minister will also visit Heliopolis War Grave Cemetery to pay tributes to Indian soldiers who made the supreme sacrifice fighting for Egypt in World War I. Defense Minister of Vietnam General Phan Van Kiang was today today called on President Draupadi Murmu at Rashtrapati Bhavan. On the occasion, the President Murmu said that India and Vietnam share a rich history of civilizational and cultural linkages spanning over 2,000 years. She added that Vietnam is an important pillar of India's Act East policy and a key partner of Indo-Pacific vision. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh also held bilateral talks with Minister of National Defense of Vietnam in New Delhi. Mr Singh and his Vietnamese counterpart exchanged views on regional and global issues of mutual interest. The talks were held to further boost the defense cooperation between India and Vietnam. The defense ministry said progress on various bilateral defense cooperation initiatives was reviewed during the meeting with both sides expressing satisfaction at the ongoing engagements. Both ministers identified means to enhance existing areas of collaboration especially in the field of defense industry cooperation, maritime security and multinational cooperation. The Raksha Mantri also announced the gifting of indigenously built in-service missile corvette INS Kirpan which will be a milestone in enhancing the capabilities of Vietnam People's Navy. 
the Indian Army contingent is participating in the multinational peacekeeping joint exercise Excon Quest 2023 in Mongolia. The Defence Ministry said military contingents and observers from over 20 countries are participating in this exercise. President of Mongolia, Uknagin Kurelsuk, today inaugurated the exercise. The Indian Army is represented by a contingent from the Garhwal Rifles. The 14-day exercise is aimed at enhancing interoperability of the participating nations for sharing experience and to train uniformed personnel for the United Nations peacekeeping operations. Khadi Village Industries Commission Chairman Manoj Kumar today said the turnover of the commission has crossed 1.34 lakh crore rupees and the same has registered an increase of 332% during the past 9 years. He distributed toolkits and machinery to about 300 artisans in Telangana who received training from the commission in various trades. Speaking on the occasion he asked the artisans to become entrepreneurs and offer employment to others instead of seeking jobs. He asked them to move forward with the mantra of make in India along with make for the world. He said 100 crore rupees has been released to Telangana under the Prime Minister's employment generation program and a ready-made garments cluster was also sanctioned to Vanaparthi district in the state. The Chief Minister of Manipur N Viren Singh has again warned those armed militant groups who are under suspension of operation with the government to stop violation of ground rules or else face the consequences. Singh visited relief camps at different places of Imphal East district today. Speaking to media, the Chief Minister said the government has been monitoring the activities of armed militants and they should immediately stop violence. He said the government has been taking up measures to restore normalcy in the state and appeal to all the stakeholders to cooperate with the government in the current situation. The Chief Minister said the government has decided to build 4000 houses in the first phase within 2 months for families whose houses were gutted in the violence. He He said he has spoken to his Mizoram counterpart about the Manipuris who have taken refuge in Mizoram. Meanwhile, a delegation of MPs, ministers and MLAs of Manipur met Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and other leaders in New Delhi today. Kerala Governor Arif Mohammad Khan today categorically said that he will not give assent to the University Laws Amendment Bill passed by the State Assembly to replace the governor as the chancellor of the universities in the state. He said the bill goes against the spirit of the constitution, the law and the Supreme Court verdict. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. In Bihar the delegation of Hindustani Awam Morcha Secular submitted its letter of withdrawal from the ruling Grand Alliance to the governor the party delegation met governor in the Raj Bhavan and submitted its letter with this political development the number of allies in the Grand Alliance has reduced to 6 JDU RJD Congress CPM CPI and CPI ML are its core The strength of the Grand Alliance has reduced to 160 in the 243 member legislative assembly of the state the new development will not affect the stability of the Nitish Kumar led government Tribal Affairs Minister Arjun Munda has said the government is working on innovative methods to tackle sickle cell disease Mr Munda said this while chairing a sensitization workshop on sickle cell anemia disease in New Delhi sickle cell disease is widespread among the tribal population in India where it is estimated that about 1 in 86 births among scheduled tribes have sickle cell anemia disease the disease affects hemoglobin and red blood cells which can result in morbidity and mortality through distinct pathways Mr Munda appealed to all the medical experts health organizations and health departments to give impetus to the cause of good health for tribals and ensure that quality health care is provided to those affected by this disease The G20 Sustainable Finance Working Group held a side event on policy measures and financial instruments 
for catalyzing the rapid development and deployment of green and low carbon technologies today. After the inaugural session, the participants gathered to take a deeper view on the various aspects relating to reduction of carbon emissions and related initiatives. Livia Oliveira, the representative from Ministry of Finance Brazil, said that energy transition is gaining importance in the G20 Sustainable Finance Development Working Group. Speaking exclusively to Akashwani, she said that developing countries have several challenges to face and suffer from the consequences of climate change. Brazil's relationship with India is super strategic and appreciated India for achieving some of the sustainable development goals. India has achieved to include the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goal, into the G20SFWG, which is the, the group, the Sustainable Climate Working Group, and this is for Brazil one of the most important agenda that we need to cope, and this is an accomplishment that was achieved under India's presidency. The concluding a G20 Tourism Working Group meeting along with the Tourism Ministerial Meeting began today in Goa. Union Minister for Culture, Tourism and Development of Northeastern Region Dona G. Kishan Reddy addressed the first session of making cruise tourism a model for sustainable and responsible travel in which he highlighted the immense growth potential of the Indian cruise industry. He said that with 7,500 kilometers of coastline and a vast river system, India is one of the potential cruise tourism destinations, with many of its best tourist destinations yet to be disclosed to the world. 1988 batch Chhattisgarh Kader IPS officer Ravi Sinha will be the new chief of research and analysis wing. The Appointments Committee of the Cabinet approved the appointment of Mr. Sinha for a period of two years. Incumbent Chief of Research and Analysis Wing Samant Kumar Goel will complete his tenure on the 30th of this month. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao has kick-started the ninth phase of Harita Haram Green Garland to Telangana program as part of the decennial celebrations of the state formation. He formally launched the program by planting a sapling today at Tumaluru Urban Forest in Rangaredi district near Hyderabad. He set a target of planting over 19 crore seedlings during the Harita Haram. The Intermeteorological Department, IMD, has predicted that heat wave conditions of East India and adjoining areas are likely to abate gradually from tomorrow onwards. Yesterday, the maximum temperatures were in the range of 42 to 44 degrees Celsius over parts of Odisha, West Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, East Uttar Pradesh. Talking to Akashwani News, senior scientist in the IMD, R.K. Jinamani, said due to further advancement of southwest monsoon in parts of eastern India, heat wave conditions will abate from Wednesday. Today, there will be fall of the temperature in some parts of eastern India, including Madhya Pradesh. And now in the morning, we have given heat wave, severe heat wave, maybe isolated or few places, mainly southeast Uttar Pradesh and western Bihar and also Gangetic West Bengal. And then further over the Odisha and Jharkhand, Bidar, Chhattisgarh, Telangana. But this will be for today, 19th and 20th of the June. We have also told that monsoon will be progressing over these areas. So from 21, there uh, the heat wave in Assam, the flood situation is grim with overnight heavy rainfall across several parts of the state and nearly 34,000 people are affected in the first wave of floods in at least 11 districts. In Rajasthan, residents of Jalor, Barmer, Pali and Sirohi districts facing flood-like situation have come to a relief as rain activities stopped today. Many villages and towns are still waterlogged due to extremely heavy rains in the last three days. Electricity supply is affected in several villages and many cities due to uprooting of electric poles in Sirohi and Badme district. NDRF, SDRF and district administration teams are engaged in relief work. Divisional Commissioner of Jodhpur, Kailas Chandmina, today visited heavy rain affected areas of the division. Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot will visit the affected districts tomorrow. Jitendra Divedi, Akashwani News, Jaipur. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to leave on a five-day state visit to the United States and Egypt tomorrow to lead Yoga Day celebrations at United Nations headquarters on Wednesday. India to gift indigenously built-in service missile Corvette Ines Kirpan to Vietnam. Khadi Village Industries Commission turnover increases by 332% in last nine years. 
Hindustani Awam Morcha Secular Withdrawal Support from Grand Alliance led by Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, G20 Sustainable Finance Working Group takes deeper view on carbon reduction. That is all in the news at 9. Good night.